Hey guys, welcome to CodeCat and today we will be talking about Fetch. So Fetch is this like relatively newer API to make uh, HTTP requests from JavaScript. So today we'll be seeing how can we use that to make requests to a REST API. Also how we can load an image by it. So today I will be using this uh, REST API by HTTP bin. They have got these endpoints where we can make requests to test our uh, HTTP client. Let's try it out a bit. Uh, so you see if I uh, request this get URL and uh, uh, let's pass some parameters also. Let's say uh, language equals cn uh, and website equals YouTube. So I've passed these two parameters and uh, it's been returned to us in this args part. So necessarily this uh, API endpoint returns us this big uh, JSON object uh, along with this args part where we have passed our parameter. So we'll be uh, making this request uh, using fetch now. So this is my code editor right here. Visual Studio Code, you can use uh, whatever you like. So I'll be making my files, uh, index.html and uh, index.js, let's say. I'll be generating some boilerplate here. I just use emmet to generate this part. Emmet is pre-installed in Visual Studio Code. Uh, if you are using some other code editor, uh, I think you may install it there too. I think in Atom it's installable. So I'll be changing this title. Let's change it to fetch tutorial. All right. And I'll be linking my script out here. Index.js. Okay, so that will be it. All right, so uh, in my index.js file, I will be uh, I will be making a request to this URL, right? So for that, I'll be using this function fetch, right? And here we go. Oh, what is happening? Copy and paste. Ah, there we go. Uh, fetch also needs this object which will specify how we are making a request. So here I'll just give method and that would be get because we are making a get request. So fetch returns a promise. If you don't know about promises, I'll uh, recommend you to take a look in that. Uh, but for now, just know that they are something that is executed asynchronously and if something doesn't go wrong if everything goes right then this function is executed what we are passing in then and if something goes wrong then this function catch is executed all right so catch takes this parameter error which will be our error i'll just console dot log error Fine enough. Uh, the function in then takes this parameter of response. So this response is what is returned to us by the REST API. First, we have to check that uh, is the response okay. I mean, we have to check for uh, is there you know 404 error or 500 error. So first, we'll check that if res dot status is equals equal 200. So what do you mean by that? We mean that uh, uh, rest, rest or status, if that is 200, that means it's okay. Uh, there are HTTP status code, which tells us that uh, is our response okay or not? Like if there's 420, that means the page is not available. Or if there's 500, that means uh, internal server error. So in rest, if we are checking rest or status, if that's 200, that means that's okay. Uh, we will be parsing, let's parse, res dot json so what we are doing here is we are parsing our response to json because obviously we are getting back our response in json so we just parse that so res dot json also returns a promise so like a that one i can just say like this then 
function we're getting our data here and then catch sorry all right i'll be uh, console dot log my err right here after we get back our uh, json data we can just console.log it you know what was data right uh, i'll be opening a live server so this vs code extension makes me uh, lets me use a live server so that means whenever i save my files the page will be auto reloaded in my browser so let's take a look here yeah we have got this object printed right here and args is language en and website youtube what we has sent here and it also sent us back the headers the url so this is same as we got here so this is fine so let's try to make uh, some different kinds of request with it i mean uh, in a, a rest api we can make uh, other requests like post patch post delete uh, anything we want so let's make a post request now uh, in http bin we have got this uh, endpoint post okay uh, which returns the uh, data we send it uh, from uh, the, from our browser or from our uh, library whatever we call it so in here my method now would be post i'll also be sending some data and to send that, that there is this uh, parameter body so the body would be let's say hello posts okay that's fine enough uh, let's see what's the output now okay so we have got back this data hello post there are no args no files no form because we haven't sent any file or form data that's uh, quite fine now let's see how we can load an image with it because there will be some points where you want to lazy load some image or you want to load some image after a button uh, has been clicked so we will see how to load these images uh, dynamically from javascript using fetch all right so where http bin has this you know uh, png image a uh, round pig sort of uh, so first we will download the image and display it in a image tag let me declare an image tag image src uh, src will be blank and i'll give it an id of pig image fine enough let's see my output all right okay okay before we have not change our rest api endpoint i'll be changing this and change the method post to get and change the body okay now see there is an error like unexpected token in json and now why is that because we are downloading an image right uh, which is not formatted in json it's raw binary data but here we are passing the response into json now we need to change that we have to pass it into raw binary data right so i'll change the function name and the function is blob now once i save it we got this blog object uh, sorry blob object and the type is image png so this is raw binary data but uh, how can we put this raw binary data into our image uh, let's see so first i'll be getting a reference to the image so document dot get element y id uh, what was my id it was pig image So dot src and we will be setting this to an object URL. So object URLs can be uh, parsed from binary data and we'll be using a utility function for that. That's URL dot create object URL. So if you set the source of an image tag to its object URL, it will necessarily be uh, showing us the image and uh, we'll be passing this object URL uh, from 
data. So data is my binary data. Let's see. Yeah, we have got our uh, cute round pig right here. So uh, that will be it for it today, guys. Uh, if you learn something new, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I am new to YouTube. Uh, thank you. Keep coding.